Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Scott Breton and in this video I will be talking about lesson one of the form gesture anatomy course. So we're starting with a process for blocking in the torso masses and there's a very specific reason that I'm doing use this process with my students to develop their skills. When we look at the figure we can be very easily overwhelmed by the complexity and the detail and we can find ourselves just copying edges and details and not really seeing those details in relation to each other in the overall figure. So there is this term in drawing in drawing training um, traditional drawing training of blocking in which is all about establishing big simple relationships now what I've developed as I've been teaching life drawing and as I've been developing my own skills has been a very specific approach to drawing the figure that seems to be effective at cutting through some of that detail and confusion and getting to the, the, the bits of information that really matter. So I have here two models that I use with my students in the class. Um, one is a, an anatomical model and one is a more simplified model that takes the points that are important on here and puts them into this three-dimensional form. Now what what we're looking for when we're doing this is we're trying to establish relationships between points in order that we can take these simple forms and move them around. So if the person's arching their back, back a little bit, perhaps they're twisting, perhaps they're tilting to the side, perhaps their head's coming back the other way. So they're doing something like this. This relationship between the masses of the body are really what's interesting for us in organizing the figure and being accurate but also seeing what the body is doing in space, thinking about it gesturally already, even though we're dealing with accuracy and developing the eye and seeing clearly. So this is really this part, this uh, diagram represents what we're doing in this exercise. Now, I don't want you to think that this is the only way that I would encourage you to draw, or in fact, where I'd hope you would end up. It's a drill, it's a way of sharpening up your eye and making your uh, skills better and giving you a way to by following a very specific set uh, very specific approach and an order to the marks even that you're making it can help us to get away from the habits that we might have developed or the inclination that there there is that, that everyone shares to maybe just fall into copying edges and, and getting lost in details so uh, in this video, what I'll be doing first is going through some important anatomical points that are going to allow us to figure out where this form is and how it's oriented in space. And then we're going to be using that to depict it in the subsequent sections where we're looking at photographs of, of the model. And then we are taking these important anatomical points, placing them onto a mass, and in relation to each other and being able to do something like this seeing how they appear from the angle that we happen to be looking at the model from. So let's dive into those important anatomical points, those bony landmarks that are going to allow us to establish the general proportions and orientation of these, these central masses of the body. When we consider the, the rib cage as a kind of flattened egg Okay, and the pelvis is going to be a similar width. Right. So there's a, it's not too far from the, the, the lower ribs are not too far from the tops of the pelvis. And the pelvis is kind of a, a tapering shape down to the, the lower seat bones. Okay, with the greater trochanters coming off here, the, the, the points of the femur, the bits that you close the car door with. Okay, so there's a, something like this. So what that gives us, and, and uh, actually another thing I should put in before we go on, is that the top rib will be about there and the, the collarbones will, will swing to the sides from there. Um, and from the, the scapulas are going to be coming up here and they're joining the clavicles here yeah, and the humerus will fall from there. 
Okay, so we have our have our general general shape. Now, the muscles that the, the latissimus muscle and others that come up to the the, the the shoulders will fall from there and sort of fall below the onto the the sides of the rib cage here and down down towards the pelvis, um, and we'll have the muscles of the shoulders coming up above the trapezius and then the, the deltoids falling over the top here. The point that I want to make is that this region here is the region that is visible to us uh, and up here we don't we don't get to see the edge of the rib cage if, if someone's standing with their arms down. So this part is going to be the, the part that's really useful to us. And then when we come down from the waist, we've got the, the muscles of the the, uh, the oblique muscles that are sitting on here. And so there, so there's this little region from here down to here that is soft tissue, you could say. And then the, the glute gluteal muscles, uh, gluteus medius and gluteus maximus, are coming down and joining onto the side of the rib cage here. The quadricep muscles are flowing down here. So we have from here down to this point, we have a kind of relatively, because of the bony landmarks that are here and here, and up here through the pelvis, we have this relatively fixed sort of structure that goes down through here. So the idea is that we have the sides, of the, the lower edge is the rib cage. The rib cage is disappearing up into the shoulder girdle up above this. And then from there, from the waist, where the, which is where the rib cage is disappearing, we move outwards to these points and then we drop down through the through the hips and so we have these two this this inversion the, the taper upwards this way and taper downwards that way so that's very important and around in line with this we have the where the um, symphysis pubis is where the pubic hair will be in a nude figure and so we have this this point here and the the muscles of the inner thigh dropping down from there and the muscles of the quadricep group coming down here, the knees down, sitting here. Okay, so uh, this is the main point that I want you to see is that there's these three sections when we look from the from the front, where we've got this region here. So what we're going to be looking for is where does the center line sit relative to the two sides. So there's this rib cage arch that's coming down through here, and what we want to know is. Where, where, how far around is this, is this, um, is this uh, center line appearing as we rotate? So if we rotated uh, to the side a little bit, uh, let me just do a side view first. This will help things be a little clearer. Fr from the side view, we expect the rib cage to angle backwards. So there's this, there's this tilt backwards in space, and we expect the pelvis to sort of tilt the other way. So if you, if you consider that the, the back surface of the, of the pelvis and the angle of the top of the pelvis, uh, they'll be sort of angling like this. So with the buttocks falling off this section. So we have the erector spinae, the, the muscles of the, in either side of the spine coming down through here, the abdominals that come, come down, and then they sort of sweep inwards like this with the legs going forward like this. So we've got this mass that's sitting here that is sort of tilted in this direction forwards and then this one is tilted backwards. This shoulder girdle kind of creating a little bit more mass and the, and the pectorals a little bit more mass on the front with the neck then projecting forwards. So what we have then if we rotate our rib cage to the side a little bit we'll probably see something like this where the the, the, the the rib cage will, will, will expect to be leaning back if someone's standing in a neutral kind of position. Um, we're expecting our, the rib cage to be sort of tilted back a little bit like this, and, and the, the pelvis to be tilted forward. Something like that. So we, we, we're expecting some kind of pattern where we've got this, the, the top of the abdominals coming up here, the, the pectoral muscles are going to be coming up here and meet going up out towards the shoulders um, and 
in the pelvis, we've got this, we've got the oblique muscles, we've got the, maybe the sort of depressions here where the rib cage is, is coming in and the, and the sides of the abdominals, the belly button around there somewhere. And we have this, uh, this kind of pattern. Now what you notice is that the distance as we rotate it around, of course, is that the center line is not the same distance on this side as it is on that side. So that's what I, one of the main points that I, I, I wanna make to you. The more that the, that the, um, that the um, torso is rotated to the side, the more that we're going to see uh, the center line uh, moving around to the side. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to mention here is that when somebody is standing with their weight on one leg, what tends to happen is that they're, if they're standing like this, so their pelvis is now tilted in, in, in this direction, which is going to sort of do something like this. So the greater trochanters will still be off at this sort of angle and that their leg will, will probably come in underneath them a little bit like this. So the femur will tend to sweep towards this, this inside just a little bit. This other leg can, can do whatever it needs to do to balance them. Um, but we've got this pelvis that's tilted in that direction. And then what tends to happen is that it, because the pelvis is tilted this way, the ribcage tends to go back in the other direction. So we tend to have this counterbalance where the ribcage goes in this direction. So what happens now is that the, if this is the angle for the, for the ribcage, the ribcage is doing this. And we have this soft tissue that is sort of like a, um, you, could, you could imagine like a uh, sort of a squishy rubber flange in between two more rigid structures. So we have this structure of the pelvis um, where we've got the, the, the actual iliac crest going around here. Uh, right, so that's that one, this, this position here. And we've got the greater trochanters here. Okay, so we've got this nice structure here. And the, the rib cage, of course, is a nice structure that's that's uh, symmetrical the, with the arch of the the, the, uh, the abdominals where they meet the, the rib cage, and what you notice is that on this side, if we consider the two two sides of that rib cage, there are ribs here that are being hidden by the soft tissue on the on the side here. There's probably compression folds, and then on the other side, there's ribs that are being exposed and less uh, less hidden on, on that side. So this is, this is a very important pattern um, that we see showing up again and again. Whenever the, whenever the uh, figure is tilted in such a way that one side is more um, visible than the other side, we have this kind of pattern happening. Um, so this is, this is the point that I wanted to make. Now, if you want to strip this pattern back to, to something more like this, we could say that as soon as we have a, a a tilted rib cage this way and a tilted pelvis that way, we tend to have this pattern where the edge of the rib cage is projecting out through here. It's like the ribs are more exposed in this region, whereas on this side, they are less exposed. They're more, there's compression folds and they're less exposed. Whereas the hip has this big movement up and around. So we have this curve that counterbalances this one. And that's something that you can look for. It's just a pattern that exists again and again and again. Uh, this, it's very important where this, there's a, a little bit of an emphasis on this in this region and there's a little bit of an emphasis on that side of the hip as well. So if you like, this is straighter and this side, you could say, drops down uh, straighter. So there's a pattern, if you make it even simpler still, you could sort of say there's this curve with a straight line and then a curve that counterbalances with a straight line. So this is, this is something that is, I, I mean, uh, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm making this much more dramatic, but this is, the, this is the idea. This kind of pattern is something that shows up again and again in the figure. Okay, so in working from reference, the first thing that I want to do is to look for the landmarks that are going to give me uh, the, the clearest information that I can rely upon. So in this case, I'm looking at the back of her rib cage, which is quite clearly observable and I'm seeing the, the front edge is close to a vertical. I can actually judge that off the edge of the, of the photograph. And uh, this one might lean out a little bit further. Her center line, so from the, from the 
pit of her neck uh, down through the sternum is probably just under one third of the way across. So it really needs to go over uh, quite a long way over to that side. Okay, so we need to make sure that this distance and this distance uh, are appropriate. Okay, the angle across, I mean, in this case, the, the bra is giving us a, a sense of the angle across, and I think we're seeing an angle that is fairly, maybe a slight, slightly downhill. Okay, so this is our, so just looking at the, if, if you didn't have that, you could have, you could look at the ribs, you could look at the top ribs that are emerging through just slightly. And there's also this, this sense that, uh, which you can see from the underside of the bra, that there's, we'd be looking up at her. So there's this, this sense of this. This is easier to see when you're working from the model from life, but we can still do it when we're working from, from reference. Might just need to work a little bit harder. Okay, so this comes down, and then as the rib cage is projecting in, where do we need to go to find the pelvis? That's the next question. So I'm gonna work my way down here and say, okay, if I travel in this direction, if I follow down through here, where do I need to go? So I've come in here to the waist, that's that narrowest point. And so remember, we've got those three sections that we're dealing with. So we've got the, the, the top section, which is the, the rib cage. We've got from the waist out towards the pelvis. So in this case, coming out like this, and then we've got the down through to, her, to, to, to the point of the hip here. So the anterior superior iliac spine, the front point of that iliac crest that goes up and over here. And so on this side, flow down something maybe a little bit more vertical so that we're moving in and then out and we have an angle across there and this angle is definitely running downhill um, so yes yeah, so that needs to be traveling down maybe a little bit further down like that and now from there from these points now we have the sides of her hips or the upper part of the thigh which are sort of they they overlap of course they wedge into each other so the, the, the leg is starting from here and moving downwards, but also the, the part that we're considering the block of the pelvis is about like this. So there's a, uh, from her the center line would be somewhere like this. And I think she's twisting slightly. So that's giving us, that's telling us that this should be a little bit more central than, than the center line down here. So maybe this needs to go a fraction further over here. Okay. And and of course, we can see very clearly from the top of the underwear that we are looking down on her. So we're seeing we're seeing a you know a, 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 a downwards movement here. Uh, so then we've got this front corner of the of the pelvic block and. Could mark in the belly button would be around there, and the top of the abdominal arch would be around here somewhere if we had time. Okay, so this is so we're, we're actually seeing her rib cage project through here, and because she's arched so far back, we're actually seeing the rib cage, but often you'll actually see the top of the, the abdominal muscles. In this case, we are seeing the actual edge of the, the rib cage that's projecting around through, through here. Down the bottom, we have the lower part of the abdominals where they swell out before dropping down towards the crotch. So just to articulate what the, the leg is doing, there's a direction that's coming down fairly vertically. So where would the knee be? Okay, it's coming inside a little bit and there's a, there's a uh, tapering shape to that. Okay, and this, the, the region of the abdominals, of course, is coming down and is going to find the, around this region, which is about the symphysis pubis, so the, the, the lower, uh, the point where the two sides of the, the pelvis meet, the crutch, and then the other side of her, the, the other leg coming down in this direction. The overall direction and we can we can look for the, the where does this knee sit relative to certain other points so perhaps I've gone a little too wide there I need to come down a little bit more there and that will bring me in a little bit this way and 
but greater trichanter would be somewhere around this region. And that's where we're getting this sense of this, the, the block of the pelvis that's sitting in here. So the, the th a thigh coming from, from where the iliac crest is sweeping around here, the thigh is actually this bit and this bit. But the block of the pelvis that we're thinking about overlaps with that. So we actually have this sense of uh, this volume here, as well as the volume of the thigh coming down. And the direction you can see from these, uh, from the, the, the lines that have been put onto her, um, that we're slightly looking down on this, and on this one, slightly looking down on that as well. Okay, so let's move on to a view that's a little bit more tricky. So rather than having a view that is as frontal and where we can see the center line quite clearly relative to the two sides, I'm going to look at a, a side view. In this case, the, what I'm going to judge, I'm going to ignore the pectorals and the breasts, and I'm going to look for where the point of her clavicles uh, starts, where the, where, the, where the pit of the neck would be, where you can just see her neck is coming down and there's just the, the front point of where her clavicles are emerging from. And what is the angle that's traveling down through the sternum? Because that's an edge that I can, I can rely more on. I can make a judgment about what angle that should be. Uh, on the other side, uh, her rib cage. We can see her rib cage is widening out as it's as it's dropping down to the lower part of the of the um, the rib cage is just getting a little wider as it drops down through there. That kind of flattened egg type form, and even though it's extremely oblique to us, the front surface of a body is is running slightly down downhill like this. So partly I know that because I've got the sense of this bra, we're going looking up and over like this. I can see between the two, the two breasts. Um, so in, in life, it's much easier to judge this. I can, it's, it's much easier to see that there's, a, there's an angle that's running across here. But in this case, we can just use these clues like the fact that, that uh, one breast is, is high and the other one is lower. So it's giving us an angle across this way. So that's the information that we want. So we've got our two sides. We've got our, our center line is right over on that side. And then, and we've got our sense of this volume going up and over. And from there, I'm going to be able to build this out and, and add in the, the, the arm, build where that arm is. Okay, but before I do any of that, I want to look at what the, uh, the lower part of the body is doing first, because that's really going to be the relationship between these two parts. The, the point of this exercise is to say, uh, what is the... What is the relationship within the torso? This is going to be the guide for not only this kind of block in, uh, but for doing uh, a type of drawing which is based on the design and based on the gesture of the pose as well. This is going to be absolutely critical and that's why I'm emphasizing the idea of starting with the torso rather than starting with just trying to block in the whole figure. I really want you to focus on what is the feeling of the torso. Uh, which really comes from the relationship of these two parts. So what is the top half doing? What is the bottom half doing? And this is containing the kind of the essence of the pose usually is really absolutely core to it. Now, if I follow down through here, uh, we, we're projecting inwards. Uh, it's hard to tell, but there's a very slight bit of light that's just sitting here. And that's really where the waist is coming in. So that's gonna be the, so the bottom part of her rib cage is just coming in something, something like this. And then from, from just below that, we're seeing the erector spinae muscles and, and the, the other back, uh, back muscles are just projecting out a little bit from the rib cage here. And we're seeing this movement outwards. And I can just pick up just below, just above where the, the line of the underwear is, this line of the hip bone coming up and over like this. And uh, so now we have this, these, the three sections once again. So we have this idea of uh, above here is the rib cage and then we've got the, the middle, the squishy section that, that can sort of, that's where the lumbar spine is and takes up the slack between these two structures. And then we have the pelvis, of course, dropping down here. So I'm following this down through to where it, uh, it compresses in. And I can look across as well. I can say, okay, if I was to project this line across from this narrowest point, uh, where where does this, so this point gets a, goes a little bit below where this, plane break is. So we can look across and, and uh, vertically and horizontally to see what's happening in that way. So then we go out to, to the, uh, the abdominal as the abdominal sweep out. And I'm just going to follow the, the line of those abdominals coming through. Um, 
on the back, I'm following the, the line of the, of the hip where the gluteus medius would be up and underneath here. And of course the, the gluteus maximus is pro projecting above here. So we have this uh, slight movement outward. So we have the gluteus medius up the top and then the maximus coming down through here. On the front corner, we have this, this uh, very nice, on this case, the shadow is really projecting down through here. And that's where the, uh, the tensor fasciae lata muscle, this teardrop shaped muscle is coming back here and it's coming towards meeting where you can just see where the uh, greater trochanter is projecting through here. Okay, maybe a little higher, actually somewhere there. Um, so we've got this, so we've got one side and the other side. Her center line again is right over on this edge, okay? And what is the, what is the angle across here? Well, this is a good example where probably her pelvis relative to the, the position that we're seeing, so the perspective that we're seeing of her, uh, I, I think it would be, it's quite straight through, maybe fractionally up and over, just fractionally. It's very, very subtle though. It's certainly less than this. And that's what we're looking for, the difference between what the upper body is doing and what the lower body is doing. So there's a, there's a tilt going on here. Is there a twist? Not so much, maybe a, a fraction. We might be seeing a fraction more of the center line down the, down the bottom here, uh, but, it's, 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 she's not, she's not uh, twisting in a really obvious way. Um, so we have this going on. And in terms of the, the, the way she's tilted towards or away from us, she's, she's just tilting just a, a fraction. Uh, not, so there's a, there's, this is slightly different to this. So what we're looking for is that, is the difference, difference between, the two, the, between the two parts. Okay, so that's, uh, so if we just uh, work down a little bit lower, uh, then the, what would be the direction of this thigh? Well, I'm looking for what the, where the greater trochanter is, and I would move through, it's a little bit back uh, past vertical, so her, her, her femur, where the femur is starting here, moving back in this direction uh, towards the knee, it's not quite, but maybe a, a fraction more vertical than what I put there. But if you were trying to exaggerate, of course, that's what you would exaggerate. You would you would maybe make that, um, may, maybe push that leg further back, depending on what you were trying to do with the, uh, how you were trying to emphasize the pose. So given that there's this movement up and over this way, that's telling us that there's a, uh, the, the angle on the front here, that's telling us that there is a, this position where this other, the leg starts on the far side of where the abdominals are coming through. Um, that's telling us that her, the, where the, 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 these muscles start, so that where the quadricep muscle group starts, which is falling from these, this point. So this is absolutely key from this point here, the, uh, the, where the iliac crest comes, comes through, that, uh, that point there, the anterior superior iliac spine, same as this one, okay, this is where a series of muscles are falling from, but particularly in this case, the rectus femoris muscle, which is the top part of the quadricep, is falling from there. And on the on the far side, we have the same thing. This kind of sweeping inwards at the, the top end of of the uh, of the muscle, and the swelling outwards for that. So the other thigh would be traveling slightly forward, maybe a little bit more vertical, and we would be seeing something like this. Okay, so we have our our two. Thighs. Now let's just quickly before we move on, let's just look at the difference between the two, um, the two thighs. And because her legs are one is tilted under, one is tilted towards us. Uh, this is a, a great example where the far side. So if we put a cross contour around here, you can just see from that the black strap that's around her leg. That black strap goes slightly that way. On the other side, it's going slightly the other way. So her leg is tilted slightly down to, towards us. And as soon as we do that, we have established this idea uh, that's not fully articulated yet, but we've captured the idea that one leg is going past the other one. And that's what, really what we're looking for. So we've we've organized, I think, the, the main information that we're looking for there. We can improve the shapes beyond this point, so perhaps this needs to come in, we might need to come, come down a little bit further, we might need to drop in, make this a little narrower down through here, uh, and that's bringing this, maybe that brings that angle out a little further, we might need to bring this in a little bit further, um, but we can do all of those things, we've, we've, this might need to come out a fraction more, so 
we can go and develop these things further, but the idea is that we have the, the, the key relationships have already been uh, noted. Uh, from here, I think this has actually got, gotten a little too long relative to that, so that's the top of a uh, clavicle, and then the shoulder would be up here. And you could work your way through looking for the angle of the uh, leg masses and arms and the orientation of the head as well. Um, okay, let's move to another example. This is a view that's a little bit more tricky. So in this case, our we're still looking for these the, the sides. Uh, so I might still start with the back edge of a rib cage and the and the front edge. Again, ignoring where the breast or uh, any sort of soft tissues are, I'm really looking for the general movement outwards like this. Uh, but what I but the trouble is that with the shoulders, the shoulders are in quite um, dramatic positions here. So I'm still I, what I really need to figure out is where does the actual what's the actual orientation of the rib cage underneath that in this case. Uh, so in many cases, it's it, it tends to be more uh, more obvious. But in this case, it's maybe a little bit more tricky. So the 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 arch of the of the, the the, the thoracic spine, so the, the rib cage vertebrae the, the, that the rib cage is attached to, um, is coming from over on this side, very close over on this side to where this edge is projecting upwards. And then where is her, uh, where is the base of her neck? So what we're looking for is the angle between around somewhere here where her hand is and down to this position where her there's a, there's a curve to it, of course, because the, the rib cage has a has a volume outwards. But there is an angle between these points that we're looking for, and so it's clearly going downhill. And that that last vertebrae, which is at the base of the neck, is actually the vertebrae just above the the, the first rib starts about here, and the, it's the last neck vertebrae actually. So that's a really important one, the seventh cervical spine. So that's the, the last vertebrae of the neck. And then her shoulders, so her shoulders are somewhere here like this, just to orient where you are in this, this picture and the other scapula. We've got this L shape of the scapulas that we're looking for here and here. Okay, so there's this, this relationship between the, 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 that is telling us that the, the rib cage is actually tilted forward like that. Okay, what is the angle across here? So I'm seeing in this case, uh, I could try to feel it across the, across here. There is a twist to her in this case. I'd say there's a twist to her rib cage, but uh, just looking at this in general, I think this is fairly vertical and the angle around here is sort of like this. Just looking at that, the bra strap, that we'd be going around like this, around this volume. Okay, so that's that's what we're looking at. That's the sort of the volume. So the under, not underlying volume that's that's hidden by her shoulders would be something like that. So the rib cage is tilted down in this kind of direction. So from here, her hand is hiding the the, the top of the erector spinae muscles that are following around through the lumbar spine here. But can we say? Can we work out from some position here where the uh, iliac crest would be. That's what we're really looking for because what we, what we want to know, do is establish once again this is the top part then we've got the squishy bit in between the two structures the rib cage and the pelvis. So I'm looking down through here what is the distance between where her rib, rib cage is maybe just projecting just out a little bit more out that way and then there is a distance of something like that to where her um, to where this iliac crest is starting. So iliac crest is sitting somewhere like that, I'd say. And so we've got this, what this distance, we're gonna, that's really critical. We don't want that to be too big or too small. Uh, we, we need to know, note where that actually is. Now, a good place to start here, on this side, the abdominal volumes, that's a little bit more, it's a little bit more tricky. We can pick it up just down through here where the front of your underwear is. Um, on the back, this is gonna be a useful area because just down through here, this side of her hip is sort of following the angle of her, um, 
where the, the, the lower part of the lumbar spine and the sacrum is, is traveling. So there's a, there's a good angle there that we can sort of rely a little bit more on that flows into the, into the, into the buttock there. So the angle going across in this case is you can just see there's actually a little shadow just where her fingertips are meeting here. There's quite a, um, a dark little shadow that's where the top of the underwear is. And you can see it's quite, quite sort of vertical relative to this thing. And then when you think about the angle, uh, you know, around the, the, the to, to orient this thing in space, um, we would be looking at the top of the underwear that there it's we're going down and under like this. So again, quite a different, quite a different picture to this one compared to this, this one here. So now on the front side, fairly parallel, there's a volume of the abdominals coming through here, but then there's this angle here, which is fairly parallel to the back surface of the pelvis. From there, uh, we, we do have the top surface of this thigh and then the, what is the angle of that thigh? So if we were to follow that down through in this kind of direction, perhaps a little bit, a little bit higher, um, and we can look for the general shape of that. General uh, shape of that, of that thigh coming down into here and into the knee. Okay, we can look for where does the, where does the knee finish? So it really has to come back to about here somewhere. Uh, so we might estimate at this point, at this point, so just about, just about that. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I should just say here as well that in this case, the center lines are very close to the sides. We, we, I don't think we're going to be seeing this, the center lines in the way that we're seeing the center line is in between the two sides. In this case, I don't think we're going to be seeing the center lines at all for the pelvis. So they're, they're really hidden on the two sides of this volume. Okay, so just looking at where the, the lower part of the leg is coming back up like this, uh, this foot, where does it sit relative to the end of the buttock? We drop a vertical down here, this one, so that between the two, between the heel and the, and the um, ball of the foot, there is an angle that's moving outwards and there's a top edge to that to that foot, we can block in how big is this gap, uh, maybe it comes in a little further, okay, so we have this shape that's coming down through like that, okay, and perhaps getting down a little bit too low, I need to bring, bring that up a fraction more. The other leg is emerging from here, which is just showing you, in agreement with this, just how how high the far side this is really traveling upwards that's telling you how much this this volume of the pelvis is tilted uh, in space uh, to, uh, away from us so that's the top edge of the uh, underwear and then if I follow that uh, shape around so that's going to be where the where the, the underwear is traveling okay looking at the other leg the other leg is yeah starting up coming up through like this and we can just see the shape of the, the breast sitting there. Okay, the back of this leg, which is coming from to sex with that, with that knee. And the underneath this arm, there we have this shape of the latissimus muscle is traveling down through here. So what is the what is the shape? That maybe needs to go a little bit lower there. So there's a there's a certain negative space that exists between the top of this thigh and this and this shape. Okay, so her her shoulder uh, comes down through somewhere like that, and there is an angle that her, that her whole humerus, the upper arm muscle, would, would make, and so it's traveling down something like this. But I need to make sure that it doesn't go too far tells me that maybe this needs to come forward a little bit further and this needs to intersect. So there has to be a slight overlap. I'm just looking at those at those shapes, just trying to improve the, maybe needs to get a little bit longer again. space to 
square that hand, the length of the hand, and then the width of the neck, top of that shoulder. Okay, let's look for where her chin is. So her chin is quite close to is quite close to this where the top part of the shoulder is projecting forward, and then her the deltoid muscle is actually starting all the way down here. So we have this position for her chin, which is somewhere around there. So the width of the neck, that distance to, out to her chin is, let's probably drop down a little closer, but her, where does her chin start? I always find that the, finding the chin is a good place to organize from. What is the angle of her face? So you can see there's a nice, good directional line uh, going down through the face here, perhaps a little steeper. Um, and then the back of the neck and following this movement around. So if I was to project a vertical from here, where does it hit? Okay, so I project that up and that's around about in line with the ear. So that's working out okay. So her ear is just sitting somewhere there. And that's going to be a useful point once we get the general shape of the head in. So what is the, uh, the, the, the center line of the head is going to be following from the back of her neck here. So in fact, it's going up and around here. So if we were to consider a center line sort of equivalent to the center line of the torso here, and what would be the angle around? Are we looking across or along? Uh, are we looking up at her head or down at her head? In other words, are we, is, it, is it as though, even though her head's at a strange angle, angle for us, uh, it is, is it that we're seeing her side on or slightly from above or slightly from below? I think in this case, it is fairly side on. So I think actually her, her center line would be something like that. So that's establishing the orientation in space. Okay, which is, and her eye is around that level. Uh, the tip of the nose is just projecting through somewhere here. So this arm then, what is the direction for this arm? Projecting up through here and then down through to the hand here. Okay, so that's around our elbow position, which is, yep, that's not too bad. Let's see how it works out. And then considering that negative space as well. Is that going to be large enough? And we can just see her hand sitting in that position. Perhaps it needs to be a little bit higher up there. And the, the tip of those fingers finishing about there. So you can just see this this shadow shape here, which is really where the the waist is. Uh, so there's a there's a tone shift where the top of the we're sitting on the top of the. Uh, the oblique muscle here, and then we've got this idea of the ribcage sitting underneath here. So now we might need to improve gradually the shape of this shoulder. of these volumes definitely by projecting slightly towards us it's 
and is coming slightly back in space, just, just slightly. And this arm is fairly side on. So even though we've got the general shape there, there is a little bit more of a projection back and then down. We have... Okay, so at this point, if I had more time, I would be going through and improving all of these shapes, but trying to keep thinking about these volumes. Perhaps this the pelvis needs to be a little wider. I want to keep thinking about these these volume these uh, uh, parts of the body, whether they're the cylindrical mass, for example, of the neck here, or the volume of the rib cage or the upper body overall kind of uh, tapering block of the upper body, or the pelvis. I want to think about them as three dimensional objects. So it's not just a matter of moving edges around. Uh, it's a matter of thinking also about the idea that one side relates to the other side. So if I move this down, I'm going to have to move down the other side as well. So as we refine each of these shapes, we should discover that things work out. And if something doesn't work out, then that's a good, good cue to go back in and correct something. And what we're trying to do as we develop uh, the drawing in this kind of methodology, which is very analytical and it's really about, you know, trying to improve our accuracy and see the shapes more, is we're really trying to train ourselves to see these kinds of relationships so that when you do more fluid uh, gestural type drawings or drawings that are more based on seeing the big patterns of the body you are it's the, the, some of these skills have become where, where our, there's part of our mind that is automatically looking at this the what the character of this shape is and is all the time trying to improve that um, or at least being aware of it, even if we adjust it, that we're able to see that shape and make it a, a, an informed decision about wanting to, to modify from the observed, um, the visual kind of reality of what we're seeing and, and what we want to, how we want to adjust things in order to achieve a certain, uh, to, to, in order to create, uh, capture a certain uh, effect or something that we're interested in in the figure, but we're not doing it, we're not altering the body as much by accident and more by intention.